Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakorash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, response. I try to be as uh, concise and to the point as possible um, dealing with this uh, comment that was left on the elder apostle Gabar's page. Now he did a response to it. All right, the uh, page daily edification four. All right, the title of the video: Another reason why you women should refrain from teaching the scriptures. All right, and um, you know here it is. He's doing a video, you know, posing a great question on why didn't Saul go to hell? All right, pretty much the scripture says that one who deals with witchcraft and you know, so forth, should be put to death, right? All right, and then when you go into the history of the kings of Judah, you know, many of them, all right, got into child sacrifice, all right, and, and idol worship and all kinds of wickedness, and when they died, they simply slept with their fathers and never said any of them went to a place called hell where they were tormented forever and ever, okay? Now, uh, and even like this brother left this comment, it says, where is the creation of hell in the beginning in the book of Genesis? You never see this place of torment, you know, where you burn eternally forever. All right. You don't see that in the creation story. But anyway, the comment this uh, lady left in which I just, you know, told her, shut up. That's the comment I left when I saw this comment. But. She says, the Bible teaches that the dead cannot return. That woman did not call Samuel. She called a familiar spirit and deceived Saul. And Saul was killed for consulting a medium. All right, here it is. The apostle is breaking it down. And here, this woman, all right, just has to come and usurp her authority. All right, why don't you go out to the highways and the byways? Anyway, I'm not doing this video to even get you know, um, on you women, but I wanted to deal with this mindset because it's, it's a heavy mindset in Israel and you have a lot of you Israelites tiptoeing around, all right, the true understanding of the scriptures and the hard things that make us to seem crazy as such as one being raised from the dead, all right, like the group One Body in Yahawashai, they say if one was raised from the dead or if these miracles that we uh read about in the scriptures were true they would be witchcraft all right and if you don't believe all right that one could be raised from the dead then you don't understand the power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai or you're not in the faith all right if you don't believe that then you don't believe in the resurrection all right and if your faith is weak in that area pray to yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right, because you could be sincere, but you may be weak in a particular area. Well, you have to pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahusha to strengthen your faith. But you have those who are flat out saying, just like this lady said, the Bible teaches that the dead cannot return. And we're going to show you that that's an ungodly mindset. OK. And she's going off and the understanding on that was explained in this video. All right. So if you want that understanding again, subscribe daily edification for and this is the video okay and he goes into the account with Saul consulting Samuel and the the lady all right the witch he went to all right which according to that you know uh, you know you should you should be put to death but the question is why when all of these wicked kings of Judah saw himself go off and do things that are wicked why did they all simply when they died go sleep with their fathers because what we teach is true through the Holy Spirit, all right? When you die, all right, the flesh returns to the, the earth through a process of decay, all right? And, um, you know, but the spirit returns to the most high, all right? Nobody goes, even in the book of Job, it tells you even the, the, the wicked spirits are at rest in the spiritual realm. Anyway, check this video out. If you want more understanding, now I want to get this real quick to show you that 
to have the faith of Abraham is directly tied to believing one can be raised from the dead. Now, this is Hebrews 11 and 17. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that re uh, had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, we know Abraham had more. He had eight children, but it calls Isaac his only begotten. All right, because Isaac was the chosen one, the chosen seed in which the promise and inheritance would be passed through. OK. It says of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So when you go to that account, here it is. Abraham is given this promise of the promised land. And then he's told that that inheritance was going to be passed down through Isaac and not Ishmael. But then he was given the order to sacrifice him. All right. <laughs> now, it was a test of his faith. All right, but Abraham was all for it. And why was that? Let's keep reading. Let's read it again. By faith, Hebrews 11 and 17, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had the promises, all right, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So the Lord told him in Isaac, all right, this inheritance is going to be passed down. He, Of course, he was going to have a son named Jacob, 12 sons. And that's how we would, you know, receive, you know, the, the kingdom eventually through the remnant of that seed. So here it is. <laughs> he's being told to offer up Isaac. And when you read the story, he, he's all about it. He was going to do it. He was going to sacrifice Isaac. Why was he going to do it? Verse 19 says, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. All right, through Yahweh Shah. So let's read this in the NLT real quick. In the NLT, let's read this. Give me a second. My computer's running one of those mornings. This is the book of wisdom, uh, the book of Hebrews 11. Let's see here. In 17, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son. Why does it call him the only son? Because that was the one through whom the promises of eternal life and everything would, would go through. Through what? Jacob, the, 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 the promise of the inheritance to that land that was given unto Abraham, right? It was going to go through Isaac. We know he had other children, but it calls Isaac his only son, all right, because that was the chosen one. It says, even though God had told him Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted, showing you there's no through none of the other nations. It's through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. And that was through Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai was raised from the dead. OK, <laughs> anyway, right now, when you go, I got this article pulled up and we're not going to read it all. But it says all the people raised from the dead in the Bible. All right. So going back here. The faith of Abraham is directly tied to the belief that one could be raised from the dead. All right. Because here it is. Isaac was given this promise. Then it said that, the you know, then I mean, here here it is. Abraham was given this promise. All right. But then he asked the Lord, I don't have any children. You know, you, give me a son, you know, that I can pass this inheritance down to. All right. Before I pass away, can I have a son to pass this inheritance down to? And he had Ishmael. The Lord was like, nah, Ishmael's not the one. Sarah's going to have Isaac. And because they were of old age, they laughed. Okay. But eventually Isaac was born, which that's what it means. Uh, 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 laughter. That's what his name means. Okay. And um, ultimately, he was told to sacrifice him, knowing that that's who the promise was going to go through. And he's basically of the mindset, well, if you promise me, that the promise is going to go through him and you're going to you're telling me to sacrifice him. Obviously, you're going to raise him back from the dead. That is hardcore faith. 
So the faith of Abraham is directly tied to the belief that one could be raised from the dead. I just wanted to bring that out. Now, in this article, contrary to this 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 uh, foolish woman's comment, okay, she just had to come and usurp her authority, <laughs> right? Um, it gives you ten accounts of people being raised from the dead in the scriptures. Okay, the widow of Zerapath's son. All right, you can find that. All right, dealing with the uh, prophet Elijah in the book of First Kings 17, 17 through 24. All right, the Shumanite woman's son at the time of Elisha, 2 Kings 4, 18 through 37. The Israelite man, all right, uh, 2 Kings 13, 20 through 21, that's dealing with Elisha as well. The widow of Nain's son, okay. You can read that in the book of Luke 7, 11 through 17. Jarius' daughter. You can read that in the book of Luke 8, 49 through 56. Lazarus. It's one of the more popular ones. You can read that in the book of John 11, 1 through 44. Call hello, Yahweh Shem Shai. Yahweh Shai himself raised from the dead, right? And the thing is, do you really believe these things? Or when you come across these 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 things that require great faith, are you running from it and saying, ah, oh, that, that I don't know about that one? And you got a lot of you Israelites with that mindset. Okay? You can read about Yahweh Shai's resurrection. All right. In Matthew 28, 1 through 20, Mark 16, 1 through 20, Luke 24, 1 through 49, John 20. All right, uh, 1 through 21 and 25. Now, real quick, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Get that real quick. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. One second here. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Paul says this. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's start at one. And this is in the NLT. I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll change it back to King James if it gets a little weird. It says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcome it then, and you must stand firm on it, all right? It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place, all right? I pass on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Hamashiach died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. All right. As he came and knocked him off of the horse. All right. Now, let's keep reading here. In verse 12, let me jump here. It says, but tell me this, since we preached that Hamashiach rose from the dead, why are some of you saying that there will be no resurrection of the dead? Okay, and that's a question to that woman and all of you who are of the, 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 that particular mindset. Okay, it says, for if there is no resurrection of the dead, then... Hamashiach has not been raised either. Okay? And if Hamashiach have not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. All right? And we, the apostles, will be lying about the Most High, for we have said that the Most High raised Yahweh Shai from the grave, but that can't be true if there was no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Hamashiach have not been raised. 
Then if a Mashiach have not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty in your sins. You're, you're, you're still under that first covenant. Okay, which Yahweh Shah redeemed us from the curse of the technicalities of that first covenant and what came with breaking those laws. So what the hell is she talking about? But you have men also of this mindset. The Bible teaches that the dead cannot be uh, uh, returned. And we're going to show you real quick that that's an ungodly mindset. All right. Saints in Jerusalem raised out of their graves. That's Matthew 27, 50 and 54. All right. Tabitha or Dorcas raised from the dead. Acts 9, 36 through 42. Okay. <laughs> you, you, the. Eutychus in Acts 27 through 12. Okay, so maybe I'll leave this article in the description if I remember. But the Bible gives accounts of, of men, women, all right, uh, young men, young women raised from the dead in the Bible, man. All right, now I'm going to end it off here in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. All right. This is the ungodly mindset. All right. It says for the ungodly said, remember, this is what the ungodly say, reasoning with themselves, but not a right. Meaning they're talking and they, they have their reasoning, but it's not right. It says our Lord, our life is short and tedious. And in the dead or death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. See that? This is an ungodly mindset, meaning you don't believe in the power of the most high that he can do that. All right. <laughs> Although you see the sun, you see the moon, you got air, you, you know, you, you're breathing, you drink water. All right. You're able to give life through the act of a union between a man and a woman. All right. A seed is nourished in an egg. These are all miracles. But when it comes to the most high raising rum from the dead, that that that's impossible. That's witchcraft. One body. That's what they would say, right? It says, for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. The breath in our nostrils is as a smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart. Which being extinguished, our body shall be returned shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. See, a lot of people don't believe in the spiritual realm where the spirits return to. As the scriptures tell you, when one dies, the body returns into the dust, decomposition, right? You return to the earth, all right? And the spirit returns to the most high who gave it. But the ungodly don't believe in that, okay? The ungodly believe that what? The, 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 uh, you know, <laughs> the spirit shall vanish as soft air, meaning it's just going to go away. When you die, that's it. All right. It says, and our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall dis be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of sun and overcome with the heat thereof. It's the mindset of the ungodly. For our time is a very shadow that passes away, and after our end, there is no returning. For our time is a very shadow that passes away, and after our end, there is no returning. So the ungodly don't believe in regeneration, which is the same thing as reincarnation. A lot of people bug out on the term reincarnation because the heathen have their version of it which they teach you can come back as a bear. You die, then years later, you're a bear. Years later, you come back as a honeybee, stinging your enemies. No, you come back through the line of your fathers, man. Okay, you return, all right, uh, 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 onto the earth after three or four generations, according to the scriptures. But the ungodly believe there is no returning. Okay? For it is sealed that no man cometh again. That's what they believe. So they don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe that one can return from the dead. And they don't believe that spirits return onto the earth. That is an ungodly mindset according to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter.
okay? As you keep reading, it gives you more, all right? And these are the thoughts that wicked Jake had against Yahweh Shai. the thoughts that wicked niggas have against us. But we're seeing that, that, that spirit in Israel today. And this comment is just one of many of people who think like this. All right? <laughs> First of all, shut up. Second of all, you're wrong. And for any of you Israelites out there that doubt the power of the Most High God, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, all right, you better repent, all right, and believe wholeheartedly because our only way out of here is a miracle. So I just wanted to go through that real quick. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave it there, man. Hopefully I'll edify it. Uh, on to the next. Shalom.